In the middle of the 20th century, alongside the massive proliferation of computers, a new specialism in psychology emerged. Some thought it was so influential that they called it a revolution. The cognitive revolution. So what is cognitive psychology? Well, to answer that question, it's worth thinking for just a moment about what psychology looked like just before cognitive psychology existed. The subject was engulfed in a movement called behaviourism, with the prevailing belief that the role of psychology was to study people's behaviours. But some psychologists were becoming increasingly frustrated that by only studying behaviours, they weren't able to understand the processes that were going on internally. And so, in a grand shift, cognitive psychology emerged as the study of mental processes and complex behaviours. Notice that cognitive psychology wasn't saying that behaviours aren't important. They wanted to tie the external behaviours in with the internal mental processes that facilitated them. Processes such as learning and memory, language development and mental problem solving. The most prevalent metaphor within cognitive psychology is that the human mind is a computer. The approach has really tracked developments in computer science. Early cognitive psychology concepts were fairly simple, like early computing machines. A and B go in, C comes out. As computers are developed, so then did the scope of the metaphor, to the point that nowadays, with cloud network computing becoming the norm, cognitive psychology too has developed the computer metaphor, and now we use the analogy of neural networks. Cognition itself means knowing, so cognitive processes actually refer to all ways in which knowledge is acquired, stored and used. Because of this, we see a large number of later psychological specialisms, which we could say are cognitive in flavour. For example, a lot of social psychology looks at the hidden cognitive processes at work as a result of interpersonal and environmental interactions. And certainly large swathes of developmental psychology is looking at the development of cognitive processes. Just think of Piaget's stages of development. As psychology has developed and new specialisms emerge, we now see a more complementary relationship between approaches, which could be indicative of the subject maturing. Approaches aren't looking to supersede a weaker precedent like functionalism dismissing structuralism, but instead specialisms now overlap. An area of overlap that's really built momentum over the last decade or so is cognitive neuroscience. Now, traditionally, cognitive psychologists didn't really get involved in the brain on a physiological level. They were interested in process, not biology and structure. However, developments in the sophisticated brain imaging techniques like functional magnetic resonance imagery and positron emission tomography now allow scientists to actually watch the brain in action whilst a person is performing a psychological task. Suddenly, a whole new world of research opportunities opened up. Psychologists were able to watch learning as it happened, to see memories being coded and recalled through activation of neural networks, as if the brain were a great organic television. And so, with new technology came these new opportunities and a new discipline of cognitive neuroscience emerged. Traditionally, cognitive psychology could only make inferences about mental processes based on behaviour-focused experimentation. With the continued development of research methods, our understanding of the human mind increases too. Perhaps the most important message to take away from this story of cognitive psychology's development is that research outcomes are likely to be enhanced when different specialisms lean together rather than apart. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it interesting. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, or even join the conversation in the comments below. And if it's your first time here, remember to subscribe to Psychology Unlocked and click that notifications bell so that you don't miss out on any of our upcoming videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.